Hi, you good fishing folk, and welcome back to Fishing with Seth and Maine Sport Outfitters. Great to be with you on the water again this morning. And this morning I'm float tubing, kind of talking a little bit more about fly fishing from a float tube. Uh, I talked about canoeing and, and how much I love that combination. Float tubing is really my zen, and so I look forward to sharing all about this with you in the upcoming video. Stay tuned. Float tubing or kickboating is basically anything that you're doing in an inflatable, a personal inflatable uh, with fins on as propulsion. So just basic dive fins are uh, incredibly effective at getting you on the water in these. Of course, they do make fins specifically for kickboating because as a fly fishing tool, uh, the water is often not so warm that you can just get away like it is in June in Maine with shorts and swim fins. So this is, this is really the best of the best experience, I have to say. It's a pure tactile one. Um, you're feeling the temperature of the water. You feel the water wrap around your legs. It kind of gives you an idea of the speed that the fly is going on the other end, so you're really in touch with the whole line. And what I love about this method is that your line is in the water, effectively fishing a vast majority of the time, and your hands are on the rod. So you're totally hands-free getting around. You can add little strips to impart action to the fly. You can add big strips to impart speed to the fly. You can tuck the rod under and do a two-handed retrieve to add incredible speed in conjunction with kicking. So there are limitless presentations that you can do just on one cast. But what I tend to focus on is making a short cast, feeding out the line by inches, and basically trolling that fly around until I get a grab when I'm fishing wet flies and streamers, which is what I'm doing this morning. So things that imitate bait fish like smelt and big swimming nymphs like hexagenia mayfly nymphs and dragonfly nymphs and damselfly nymphs, leeches, crayfish, other big swimming objects. So as I retrieve the line and I'm getting ready for another cast, when I feel the weight forward portion of this sinking line get into my hands, I know that I can simply raise the rod up, get a look at my flies to see if I've got any weeds or anything like that on them, make one roll cast to get the flies near the surface, pick the flies up once and shoot some line. That's usually about a 40 foot cast. And then I just start kicking. And here is where, unlike when I'm paddling and I kind of have to drop slack in order to just get the boat moving, I can really fish this by inches. So I'm doing the pinch and feed method, allowing my uh, momentum of the boat that I'm creating with the fins to get us moving through the lake and just backing the flies down in the same line that they're trolling along so the flies are kind of dropping and skidding forward and dropping a little bit and skidding forward so very realistic way to just drop the flies back into the strike zone and we are going to kick along in the lake and cast and retrieve and try a few different patterns Loon just popped up off our stern, so that lets me know that we're kind of coming right through the strike zone. Lots of action out here on the lake this morning. Hopefully we'll hook up at some point. A few points about the craft that we're fishing from, great old Outcast Super Fat Cat float tube. This model's 20 years old. I believe it was 2000, maybe even 1999 when I picked this boat up. But the design features that make these boats, I think so perfect for this type of fishing and um, 
really eye-opening for many anglers are the way that you've got either an inflatable or a foam seat and backrest, and in this case, mine are all foam. I feel like it's been a part of the longevity of the boat. There's really nothing to degrade about that foam, especially if you're fishing in salt water and you're keeping it rinsed off. It just lasts incredibly well. The foam, or if it is an inflatable model of the seat and backrest, really keeps the whole hull of the boat pretty rigid. And these inflatable pontoons are really mostly for tracking. So disaster can't really strike. You're never gonna be in peril in this style of Outcaster fish cat float tube that we carry at Maine Sport Outfitters. Um, so safety is a, is a big concern with these. I really feel like these are a, uh, an access point for many anglers that is yet undiscovered. It's low impact, great exercise, just inflating them when you get to where you're going out of your car or truck. Um, it's really nice, low impact, easy on your joints exercise when you're out on the water. So everything about this method is sustainable. It's sustainable for you. Even though I'm not roping them in like crazy, it's incredibly fishy. And if you're practicing catch and release, it's obviously very sustainable for the fishery. Um, but this is, the, this is just one of the nicest ways to get outside get exercise, really be a part of the medium, and be totally safe and cover lots and lots of water. So pedal kayaks, you know, are definitely in that conversation. I enjoy this even more when you think about the total weight of a float tube like this being under 15 pounds when soaking wet. So easy to inflate, deflate, stow into a small car, um, safe for sheltered salt water, great for still waters like lakes. Not really recommended for rivers just because the hydraulics do tend to push your fins up near the surface. And so you've got to work to keep your fins down and therefore maneuverability is a challenge and you don't want to be hurting for maneuverability in swift water. So they make framed versions of these for, uh, for swift water that we'll check out on future episodes, I'm sure. That's a pledge. Uh, but for still waters, really tough to beat. Great for your body, great for the fishing, easy to get around, and not too costly to access. Well, we're approaching the boat ramp, and again, we've had a few pulls, but no commitment from the fish. But we've had a great time kicking around and sharing a little bit about uh, these ideas regarding float tubing and how to bring fishing uh, into every day and make it really a, a part of your routine as a way of uh, exercise really and just finding your center. So as I said in the beginning when I talk about float tubing being my zen, of course I'm being a little bit euphemistic, but what I really mean is that you are getting the full experience. You're roughly turning the temperature of the water, in this case it's balmy and nice, but I still have to layer up. You're getting a little bit of exercise and you're right down in the medium that you're fishing. So the fish don't know you're there. It's a super stealthy way to fish, therefore, and you can stay on top of the action when you get dialed in onto the pattern they're eating, which will have to be the meat of another episode. So thanks everybody for tuning in. If you're interested in watching this video or seeing some of our previous videos, please follow the links here to our other content, and I look forward to seeing everybody. Bye for now, folks.